veteran and still damn proud of it. Hey, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. Today I'm getting out here to play with a little something that you sent me. Yeah, you being David Jones out of Aberdeen, Washington. David sent me some beautiful wood. Oh, it is some sweet stuff. Sent me a, let me say this is a 5 by 5 by 2 feet long. And I got a 4 by 4 by 2 feet long. And I got a slight hernia from lifting it up and bringing it in from the post office. This was a hell of a gift. It really was. Uh, David said I really got to turn something out of this. So today I shaped it up and I want to show you a project that you can get into without a lot of expense. And probably not without a lot of trouble. And it's a good learning experience. And that's what this is all supposed to be about. Stick around and most everything, most whatever you watch, will you? Will you just watch? Okay, discombobulated I might be, but it's almost 2019, so I'm getting ready. Yeah, we're going to party hardy, boys, girls. Yeah, we're going to have a little fun. I took the block and I cut me a five quarter, which is a full thickness, full one inch or one and eighth inch piece, about uh, four inches, four and a quarter inches across. Now, that's not an exact number, but it's close enough. Why? Well, I'm going to put it in my jaws that I made to go on my faceplate, on my jumbo jaws. And these jaws are going to hold it, and then I'll be able to put the middle, the, the center in it, and show you how I get to that size. And that's really what you have to do in the beginning to get started. i got to look at a few other things here. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, by the way, if you copy me on Facebook, don't send me any more photographs of your silly ass injuries. And I say it that way. I don't need to see injuries and know they happen. They happen. Take care. Don't get smashed. Don't get cut. Don't get bruised. Wear your face hair. Put on your safety glasses. Do the right thing. Send me a picture of that, will you? And uh, I saw the other day that live, the live center I use here for my one-way live center, that is on sale on Amazon for I think $114. And that gets you the live center, the cup, the cup, and the holder, and the rod, and all those other parts. Really a good investment. If you're looking at spending that Christmas money, or have somebody give you a little something, <clears throat> or you, somebody's got to make amends, that's what you want to get. It's on Amazon.com. You can't beat that. And by the way, while you're watching this video, press hold. Go, not yet. Uh, go down below and hit the subscribe button subscribe and then there's gonna be a little bell next to it if you press the bell then you not only subscribe and you don't pay for it but when you press the bell you get notified whenever I post a new video Amazon's I mean YouTube's infinite wisdom they can see all this and they'll send you a video telling you hey look Eddie's got a new video out there and then you get notified because like I never know when you did I'm here all the time all the time and I got a couple of quick notes here, but we'll cover them as we get into it. I'm still playing around the scratch-all thing. Need to find the right piece of steel for the rod. My option was to break an old scratch-all and take that piece. Really not a smart move, so I'm not going to do that. So stick by. We're going to do a couple of smart moves. Maybe. Hey, before we get started, you see that? That's my new craft supply smock. Look at my big sister, did she put my name on it? Look at that, huh? Ronnie Bonnet gave me this for Christmas. Isn't that nice? So I have a working smock that works. All right, I'm gonna go back over to the lathe here. That's what you're here for, right? One way revolving, a one way strong hole chuck is behind here. Then I put on the one way jumbo jaws um, with a maximum. RPM about a thousand RPMs, okay, and then on that I've got with bolts these bolts here that hold it on, and then and through these screw holes in the back I've got a small screw holding it so they don't move. They became part of the face of this, and why is that? Why not just use rubber bumpers? Well, because I'm going to cut right on up to here, and if the here isn't here and it's the aluminum is, I'm going to cut right up to the aluminum. So I don't want it to happen. 
my block has been rounded out to up close to what I want and then I'm going to put it in the jaws and hold it. Now, the beauty of this is I'm wood to wood to wood to wood to wood and if I've got all this outsized and I'll explain the outsized this where is the pencil? Okay. This crack right here going around the outside is minimal. It was cut to be the rough size of this with the jaws being open a little bit because I do want to be able to crunch them down. Now this is going to hold the block while I take the next step of creating a center. And the center, if you haven't turned pins, I mean bracelets before, and you're not sure, get out a piece of scrap wood and put a center in it and then put that center at, at about two and three eighths inches. That's what this one is right here. You know, you're going to make me check this, aren't you? Stand by. I'm kind of glad you made me do that because I went about the old stick rule and I checked the inside ID. The inside ID. Isn't that something? The in interior dimension and it's two and one half inches. Now this one fits perfectly onto my bride's wrist. Perfectly. I think we did some two and three eighths at one time in a real old, old, old video. Um, and it worked out. But cut a piece of wood. Uh, it can be masonite if you wish or thin plywood and put a two and three eighths inch hole in it, cut it just like this. Then put a two and three eighths hole in it, sand it out and let her try it. If she can get her hand in it, there's no way I'm gonna get it this, okay? If she can get her hand into it and get it on her knuckles, then you know it's right. If she's gonna fight it, go a little bit more, just a little bit. And remember, whatever you take off this side comes off that side. So just take a little bit off and sand it around the corners just very slightly. No real art to this, but you know, get it where it's pleasant for her. And that's what we're going to do right now. Two and a half inches. Huh. That was wrong. Six inch tool rest. Got my jaws on my jumbo, on my chuck. I brought up the revolving center because if I can hold it between centers until I'm sure it's stable, I feel better about it. And anyway, that piece right there flying off could hit me. I got my shield. So I put my shield down. Or shields up. It's an old term from when I was in service. Shields up means better have a shield on or <clears throat> all right but put your shield on get your tool rest set up I put a fresh sharp edge on my 3 8 inch Dellsworth gouge because I'm gonna be happy to use that to shape this up a little bit and get started then we get started we can rank her up okay flattened out that face so that I'm working on one plane. Now I don't feel bad about moving back my tailstock a little bit. I've got the roughest cut made. I'm going to just out of, war out of insurance sake, get about any insurance, I'm going to go back and get the chuck and check to see if I need a little quarter turn or so on the chuck to make sure it's pulled down in there good and tight. I have that and I want to make sure that vibration can lead to some weaknesses and some movements. Then I'm going to swing my, my tailstock back and get it out the way. A lot of humidity down in this area right now. I mean, the air is so thick. Well, let me show you here. Yeah, cut a chunk out and, and mail it to you. Uh, it's really been bad. So, got a little rust on the, the lathe beds and all that. And I won't wax them. And I'm working on a couple. Somebody told me the other day about using soap. I think that's still wax. Um, and I've tried a couple other finishes. I just found I cleaned it. I just cleaned it. And I'm alright. But we got to talk about that one day. We have to come up with a fix for it. And part of the fix on some of the stuff that's hard to move around 
It's just corrosion building up. And I've decided I'm going to sandblast this monster and clean up all this paint and stickers and decals and all the other stuff that's on it. I got a nice, my wife said it's not beige, but it's not real true, true color. Um, real true color. But I want to do this and then I'll have a better surface to work from. That's what we're going to do. As we get into creating this two and one half inch penetration, I got to have to go through the center, okay? You can do it a couple of ways. You can take a, a, a regular uh, chuck and put it on a piece of 3 8 inch 24 bar and stick it in a handle and then you put that keyless chuck on it and that works really good for going through the center or something, marking the depth of drilling while you hold it. That's a nifty little tool. You should make one. Here's another one for you because I got a bunch of them. I went looking and I found about 10 of them. This is a little bit different. This is a 3 8 inch long drill bit. I got an Ace Hardware store. I like Ace Hardware. And I made a handle for it, put a pipe, pipe coupler on it for, for the... You can't see over there. See the, see what I'm talking about? That's what I've got. All right. See, that, that's a grommet. Why? This is sort of like a secret. Okay. If I want a jar or a bottle, a vase, and I'm turning out of this block of wood, and I don't want to go through the bottom of the wood, I'm going to set my grommet to where when I make contact, see how much meat I got left up here at the bottom? So that's my depth gauge. So you didn't make a drilling thing. You made a drilling thing that's a depth gauge. And it's 3 8 inches, not hard to get into. I like it. Um, it cost me about five dollars at the Ace Hardware store, and then I made the, the little handle. This made out a piece of of um, cedar, plumbing part for the coupler. I told you about the, the grommet. What would I use for a grommet? Well, you're in Ace Hardware. Find one that fits on it really tight, really tight. You don't need a lock nut and all that because you're not going to go past that. So we got that done. Shields up. I'm going to expand this to two and a half inches, two and three eighths, and then a fuzz. Two and three eighths, then a fuzz. All right, got it? Now, you can do this with carbide square edge tools. It's the only practical use for a square edge carbide there is because it will make those cuts. And since you had a three eighths inch opening, you can take a little shear every time you don't hit the, the middle dancing around on you when you try to go through. You can take some playing cuts in on a shape to get the re to reduce the, the bevel on it. Several things you can do, but it's all going to lead to where if you're not comfortable, put the brakes on. I want you to be comfortable with the cuts you're making. Anything feels dangerous, stop. Think it through. Give me a call. I'll put my phone number up at the end of the video. You can always call me. People do all the time. I love talking to you folks. I had a guy stop by yesterday. I think he's from Oklahoma. I'm not on the way anywhere from Oklahoma. Okay, we're going to crank it back up. Shields up. going to kind of give it the pressure of the measurement because I would eyeball that and get it pretty darn close before I measured it but I just put my stick up and I got this to about a two and a half inch perimeter or diamond <coughs> interior whatever and I don't want to go beyond that with these cuts and that's kind of critical now how do you make the cuts now I was using a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and I like that but if you have a, a, a square edged uh, carbide and you want to take it take small cuts small cuts and take them out and it works if you have a favorite bedan type tool it just cuts like a bear this one does then I can use this and take those cuts let's do a little bit of that All right shields up
as you can see, with a large bedan, I can easily reach down in that thing being an inch and an eighth deep. With a smaller one, it'd be a little vibration, but if I take a little bit of cuts, I can get it done. But I'm getting started on it. Moving down in there, I've got a little problem with camera positioning in this studio. I lost some parts, and I hadn't got made yet. I got some boys coming to water to help me with making up some parts and pieces, and we'll get them done. I'm not permitted yet to do steel work. So, um, and remember, this is all based upon the fact that I had a brain tumor removed, went into a coma, and I'm bouncing back from all this. You can too. Really takes a little bit of time and a whole lot of patience. I don't have any patience, so I'm just working on a time thing. All right, let's. We have it trued up here a little bit. Let's get back there and make it as two and three eighths inch deep. Shields up. Two and three eighths inch wide. Shields up. See what it ended up with? I'm fixing. I got an eighth of an inch left in there. Wait a minute, you can see an eighth of an inch. I'll take care of that and then I'll be spinning it clear. Shields up. Let's go. Pardon me, the larger blade allowed me to get a good, good, smooth, clean cut all the way through. Not a lot of tearing because I got the blade nice and sharp. I touched it up again with the diamond stone before we went in there. Now I'm going to check the rattle on it. And I'm at two and three eighths. So I'm going to take a little off side and it's going to come off that side. I'm going to be two and a half and then I am ready to sand that and put the edge on it. Shields up. The larger tool made it steady, made it easy for me to go, and you can just about see I've got a really nice finish on the inside of that. And because of the size of the tool, I could go straight in, and I didn't get any eh, warpy stuff. I'm going to dress up this edge a little bit, and then sand it. Got it? Got it. Shields up. I have a two and one half inch diamond ring. That will fit my lovely bride's arm very nicely. All right, I'm right on the two and a half. Now, if it's too tight on her, make it a little bit looser, not by much. And then we're going to go ahead and sand this a little bit. I'm going to start at 80 grit, come all the way up to 320. I'm going to sand this face and this edge right here, these two. Then we'll move it to another jig to make the next two cuts. See how nice this is going along? And you actually have no worries. Wow, I should write a song about this. 
I'm going to sand this out, but it's a little torn and it might be a little bit rough sanding. I do better if I took a scraper and face that off a little bit with a scraper. Um, but I'm only going to use a quarter inch of it later on, so I don't have to worry about the rest of it. It's all going to go away. Now, I constantly say in shields up and putting a shield on, and I catch a little grief from guys about that a little bit, or turns, about why we do this and it's just a bracelet. If it comes off and hurts you, it hurts you. If you're over 60 years old, that's our average age of viewing, is over 60 years old, you're going to feel it, and I don't want you to get hurt, and I don't want you to feel it, I don't want you to slow down, I want you to be safe. It's a silly thing, but it pisses me off to see professional turners out there not wearing protective gear. It really does because they're showing you how they can do it. Kind of instantaneous and not have to worry about it. You have to worry about it. You do. Be aware of it. Be aware of the circumstances. So when I say shields up, that's what I mean. Shields up. I've cleaned up the inside and bull nose that corn a little bitty bit. Not a whole lot. You don't need a lot of slip, but a little bit wouldn't hurt. Uh, and now I've done a little bit on the facing. I've got plenty of time to do the facing. This is a practical way. Remember, you don't get to go here again. Once you get off of this, you're off of it. So a smart move right now would be to put a little sealer on it and seal it and let it rest while you get a drink of water. Okay? Or anything else, just no alcohol, please. All right, ready? I, I screwed up. I thought I heard the click, and I thought it was recording when I went through just now. I turned the piece around in the jam because I did cut it circular, and it's close enough, and then I turned it around and I refaced the back side a little bit with my scraper, just took a little bit off, and bull nose that corner a little bit. Now I'm gonna sand it back up and get this ready to go because and we'll put the sealer on it because you know I'm going to hold it by this in a few minutes and I can't get there so that's why we're going to seal it. Shields up. And I like these foam pads for doing any regular work because they are easier to massage and work around. I get all this from Vince's Wooden Wonders. Uh, that's my sandpaper paper guy. Um, it's a perfect situation for it. Perfect. I did mention as I'm using a scrap or a piece of blue paper towel. I sliced off a roll. Look, i show you. I get the roll, I take it over the bandsaw, and I cut a piece about an inch and a half wide off the roll in the bandsaw. And then I've got all these little pieces to do finishes with. And they work out fantastic. Um, and it doesn't waste a lot of paper towels and stuff. And I never bring a rag here. I might wear one, but I won't bring it here because if it catches, I lose one of these. And I only got ten when they were issued, and I don't want to lose any of them. So little simple finish on it, but this feelage really feels good. This is simple. This is simpler than gas prices, which yesterday I saw at $1.73 in South Louisiana, where it was $1.73.9. You know, that point nine thing, that had to be created by a guy in the advertisement business. Why would it make difference to me at a point nine? The only guy gaining from it is the confusion at the pump because they think people see 173, they don't do the point nine. And the other is, <clears throat> who pays attention to that? Really, I look at the big numbers, my wife says, but it's point nine. All right, so, shoo, drive you crazy. I took the bracelet out of the, the chuck. Now, if I'm doing multiple bracelets, I only have one chuck. I would do all the interiors just like this, 
And look how slick that is on the inside. See that finish? That's what you're looking for. See that? Good, that and, and you can see the Chitauri in it. It is beautiful. Uh, I like it. Thank you for the wood. Um, but if I had only one chuck, then I'd have to break it down and take the, the plates off, take my jaws off, and change the jaws. But I've got more than one chuck. Unlike Carl Jacobson, who has to keep popping on the jaws off and on, I just chop, pop the chuck off and on. Carl will love you. You did some beautiful work. But hey, man, get you another chuck. All right, that's up. What is this? This is a dead man. It's a term that maybe ain't true, but it's it's a way to hold something, and it's it's a waste block. This happens to be a really gorgeous piece of maple, but this will fit onto that waste block. I'm gonna resize it a little bit to fit on there better because I'd sized it for something else the other day, and I'm gonna throw it, run it through, and then this is gonna be able to fit right on there. Got it. Got it. I trimmed my dead man back a little bit to where this will fit on. I can slide it on, and I see him a little bit tapered in there, but I'm all right. I'm within the grounds, in fact, the head wife can try it on, see if it's okay. I'm going to put it on, and I'm going to gently, with my thumper dumper thumper, I want to knock it on there a little bit. Okay? That's all I need, really. It's going to, it'll stay on there. Um, friction. Now I'm going to true the outside, reduce the band to where it wants to be, sand it, and make a bracelet out of it. You with me? You with me. Shields up. Oh, the cut's going to be towards the tool rest, not away from it. Away from it, that wants to go that way, and that'll lead to the tool rest. Sorry, to the headstock. I turn up the edge on my scraper, and I'm going to go in now and, and clean this up a little bit. Take some very fine cuts. I'm going to get these little wispies off. See that? Pretty wispies, that's what I'm looking for. about this rig is I can do all the sanding with these soft pads. And I can see what I'm working on. It's easily held. No mechanical things in the background no, in a way. And once I have the size the right size, I'm home free. Heels up. I've sanded it to 800 grit. You see the chatoyne, you see the reflectivity of it, and you see some light cracks in it. Well, that's all the nature of the wood. It's going to be there. Now, I don't think I have a weak problem. It, it's jewelry, but I've got it to 800 grit, and I'm going to start with sealing it and putting a couple of coats of seal on it. Then I'm going to buff that, and I'm going to put some CA on it for a finish. You with me? You with me. Here's a warning for you guys, gals, wood turners, pardon me. Don't overheat this when you're sanding it, because you're just burnishing it in, and that heat can cause these cracks to go nuts along you and give up. So we don't want that to happen. I've got about three coats of sealer on it, which is really nice. And again, I'm using that 50-50 deft. And now I'm going to go to magic number one. 
which is my super fast super glue. And I went CA. Okay, I get it from Starbond. Um, I only use Starbond products because I find them to be extremely consistent. No second, third, fourth handling. It's, that, that's the folks. And I get a very good product that I can work with. And again, I'm using a little scrap of paper towel, never a rag. I'm going to keep saying that. And I'm having a little power problem with the lathe. We had some electrical problems around the area lately, and now my lathe is not slowing down the way it's supposed to slow down. That's the good news and the bad news. That's the bad news. The good news is it's a one-way. I can call it one way and they'll talk to me about it and tell me if I gotta reprogram the controller or what I gotta do. That's the beauty of it. That's why I buy them. I was about to say American made. They're in America, right? They're it's all it, they're in North America. Yeah, all right, that'll work. Shields up. Did you see the change in it? Watch your reflectivity. The change in it was radical when I put the CA on it. Radical. I mean, I'm getting flashes. That's what you're looking for. Looking for the wood to talk to you. And wood does talk to you. Move the camera a little bit so you can see this because I talk about reflectivity or the chatoyance. Chatoyance means cat's eye. Watch the wood. Just don't watch this, this, watch this. See it? See the change? Right there. That's the reflectivity of the wood, the chatoyance. Got it on two sides. There's another one. All right? And it's how you do the finish and bring it down. And I've got this coated with about three coats of CA, and I'm going to put a couple more coats on it. I'm going to let it dry or cure for a few minutes. I say dry, it's cure. Cure for a few minutes, and I'll buff it out my Scotch Bright pad again. It's this. And I've also got a finer one that's white. And I'll use these two and I'll buff it down a little bit. And then I'm done. Ready? Ready. Now we've done, we've just done a bracelet. Didn't take but a few minutes. <clears throat> now if you have to set up a set for the cold jaws, do a couple. Make sure they fit on your hand. If they're too loose, size it down a little bit. And remember, you can always give it away. Uh, the other thing is embellishment. Now, I would like to take my wire burner and burn a couple of lines in this. Put a couple of grooves. Not, nothing symmetrical. Just a couple of grooves and then burn them into the wire burner. But I left the wire burner when I picked up the spot from Ronnie. So I got to go with Ronnie's, play on a lathe, turn some wood, and get my wire burner. Yeah, getting a wire burner would be important. If I forget, i got to go back. So, boy, hey, no big deal. It comes right off the chuck. That's the beauty of it. This is the finished piece. Now, you can take a little Sharpie marker, a little bitty one. I've got one here. I would do this with, this is my Prisma, P-R-I-S-M-A color, Prisma color, Premier. It's a really fine, sharp-pointed, uh, brush-type marker. It's uh, these things. These things really write nicely. They do, and you can take and put your your name and a date or to life. And put the date next to it. Twelve. That makes a nice little treat. It really does. Practice the writing. It's I know what it says. She'll know what it says. But if it ever gets forged, they'll get, probably get it wrong. Hey, that's great. So that's what I did. Put all this together. We spun up a nice little thing. I glued paper towel to my finger. You didn't tell me, remind me. I gotta wear my rubber gloves when I do my, the uh, the super glue. Now I can sit here with my Scotch Bright and buff this out a little bit more, put a little wax on it if I choose to. I can play with it. It's a project. It's easy. 
It's jewelry. Yeah, it's jewelry. You can make points on this. Um, get out and turn one. And when you make something nice, send me a picture. Send it to my email address, captainettycastellan at gmail.com. And I will use it in one of my videos. In fact, I, I got a new video program to do it on my new computer. And I'm looking to do one with the, the photographs because they have some way to bring them in and make them look nicer and all. How can you make art look nicer? All right. Well, i got to get this glue off my fingers. That drives me crazy. And I learned a long time ago, don't lick it because it sticks to the caps. Hey, I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. I'm in the shop. I'm making shavings. What are you doing? Get out there. I do like this. Simple project. If I made it bigger, nah, you wouldn't want to see that. Trust me, you would want to see that.